Autumn always seems harmless enough as September ends. The warmth of summer fades to a nice and tolerable flurry of days, with the occasional spike or drop in temperature throwing everyone for a small but ultimately inconsequential tizzy. The boy was not aware of these trivial but nuanced patterns of adults. He simply played outside. He loved the long summer days. Every morning, the sun would peek through his window and he would throw on his shoes and head for the alley behind the shed at the back of his house. It was narrow, neglected, but not overly overgrown. It was his space. Many times the world had been saved in that alley from plots and plans of bad guys by the boy and his trusty semi-auto 45 caliber handgun. Never mind that it was really a water gun he was given by his best friend. Before his best friend moved, they only lived three houses down from each other. The two boys were kings of the alley. They were detectives for the LAPD or NYPD or FBI as they imagined damsels in distress or hostages kidnapped by Russian terrorists or they had to sneak into a Colombian drug lord's cartel headquarters. Standard hero stuff. They would fire imaginary bullets by the hundreds as henchmen after henchmen came pouring out of the contours of the forgotten pathway behind the small row of houses. The boy misses those days getting lost for hours in the world of good guys and bad guys with his partner who would always be there. Those were the boy's favorite. Autumn saw the end of the long and boundless summer. School would soon occupy the majority of their freedom and the sun would disappear early and earlier, leaving little time for the dynamic duo to save the world. Then his friend moved and the boy of seven would have to venture into the alley alone. The neighborhood cat, who no one laid claim to, but it always seemed quite well fed, would sometimes rub his body against the boy's leg a few passes and then scurry off under a fence or down the alleyway. This was the boy's world. Occasionally, a neighbor would peer over the fence and offer some kind of greeting or salutation on their way to and from their shed or flower bed. The rest of the time was the boy's to himself. He knew every anthill. He knew every type of ant that resided in every anthill. One time, he had dug out a molehill in an attempt to see how and where the moles lived. It was, ultimately, a fruitless endeavor. He had gotten more than a few splinters from the light poles that had lazily strewn wires and cables hanging from them. And the boy could tell you what every backyard was like, not because he was defiantly or deviantly spying, but from a boyish curiosity as he peeked through the slats. The boy's parents knew where to find him and did not bother him until they had need. He could play in the alley late into the evening, seeing as how there was a street light. Most often, the boy would come home once he had grown tired. The boy had always hated winter, but he had come to peace with the season. The boy had a growing hatred for autumn, though. Autumn would offer glimpses of summer, but then take them away. Winter was at least consistent. Autumn lacked conviction, as it let everything that was green turn brown. By November, the ground seemed to always be wet and muddy, even if it had not rained in days. The boy had gotten a new jacket for his birthday. This jacket was too large, and it had a thick down layer, and the sleeves had a hole for his thumbs. It has to be quite cold for a child of seven to notice the cold, and he had noticed it quite often before he had gotten this new jacket. It was like a hug. He would sit with his back to the garage wall and sit on the stump and sink into the coat. He would zip the neck above his head and draw his arms into the sleeves, making his coat a warm little room where he could play with his action figures in the short afternoon hours. It was perfect, and he loved it. He felt a sharp sadness the first time that he got a spaghetti sauce stain on the inside sleeve. It was small and not really noticeable, but it felt like the death of something. Not the jacket itself, but the jacket's perfection. The boy didn't know that he was blaming himself, but even at that early stage, he had known that the jacket's tainting would be his own fault. It was one blistering cold evening when a neighbor saw the boy tracing his math problems in the dirt with a short, stubby stick under the streetlight that he peered over the fence and asked the child, Hey kid, why do you love this alley so much? The boy had never really thought about the alley being a place that he could love or hate. I, uh, the boy tried to speak out, out of a sense of respect for adults, but faltered since he had not really thought about the alley in any real way. It was just a place to go. It was just the place for him to go. 
he had never evaluated the alley apart from itself. As the bright but wordless boy searched for the polite way to answer a question that he did not know could be answered, his father burst through the back door. He shouted for the boy. Where are you at, boy? Get your butt home. Through slurred tones and clumsy syllables, the neighbor understood all at once why the boy did not have an answer. The question sparked something inside of the boy that kept turning over and over and over. The question planted the idea that there might be somewhere else better. Some place where he wasn't in the throes of other people's addictions or shortcomings. Some place safe. Some place warm. Some place like the inside of his jacket. One day, the boy of seven lined his pockets with Pop-Tarts and the $14 that he had saved up, and he walked, not out of the back door, but out of the front. He walked down the road to places he did not know, towards a life he did not understand. A life that would be tougher than he could ever guess, but better than the one that he had lived. And the boy was never seen in that alley again. <laughs>